This is KGW News at Noon. She looked down, there was, there was a, a hole in her exercise clothing with blood. That's a mother talking about her daughter who was randomly shot in the leg while she was out running, training for a half marathon on the Padden Parkway Trail in Vancouver. Welcome to the News at Noon, I'm Drew Carney. Alicia Nilo is the name of the woman who was shot during her afternoon run back on October 21st. She says it happened right near Northeast 117th in Vancouver. That's where she says she felt a sharp pain in her hip, and when she looked down, she noticed blood coming from a hole in her clothes. Alicia's mother talked to us about what her daughter went through. I was thanking God that she wasn't more injured than she was, that she, it didn't take her life. When she was examined at the hospital, because she was brought to the hospital by ambulance, they, they discovered that if it had been even a fraction of an inch anywhere different, it would have either torn through her internal organs, um, embedded in her spine. I mean, so things could have been even worse than this. Um, so we were just really mixed feelings, you know. Yeah, doctors couldn't remove the bullet because it's wedged between vital organs. And now Alicia needs to learn how to walk again. Her mother tells us that Alicia is still in pain, but with physical therapy, she is expected to make a full recovery. The family organized a GoFundMe to help pay for medical expenses, and we embedded a link to that GoFundMe in the online version of this story at KGW.com. We're gonna stay in Clark County for this next story about police body cams. The city of Camas is equipping its police officers with those cameras, but just last week, voters in Clark County shot down attacks that would have helped county deputies get equipped with body cameras. KGW's Tim Gordon did some digging to find out why. Camas is a growing small city of about 26,000 in eastern Clark County. City leaders here just put $311,000 into a police camera program. They saw it first as a way to abide by new statewide police reform laws that require recording all juvenile and adult felony interrogations. We were thinking that one of the best ways we could attack that is by getting body-worn cameras that are available to all the officers all of the time. But while Camus is pushing forward, Clark County is stuck in neutral. That's because a vote for a one-tenth of one percent sales tax failed in this month's election. Clark County councilors say Proposition 10 would have funded body cameras and the administrative costs for 30 years. The problem is Prop 10 didn't say anything about body cameras in its title. Instead, it was billed as a tax to fund juvenile and jail facilities. Uh, but this in no way was to raise money. Uh, for jails. And yes, it was confusing and it wasn't our doing. Council Vice Chair Gary Medvigi says their hands were tied by legal advice that said the county could only ask for a sales tax in limited ways. And this way didn't work. Yeah, we had a couple of options before we put this uh, measure on the ballot. County Councilor Julie Olson did not support putting Prop 10 on the ballot because of the confusion factor. She supported an alternative ballot plan. But the entire council supports body cams, so the delay is disappointing. I, you know, if we don't get another um, measure on the ballot until November of 2022, we're a full year behind when we could um, have gotten it started, made the purchase, um, and, and start be beginning the program. So it does set us back. I am 100% behind finding the money uh, to support this program. It has to happen. Medvigi says they will look to next year, and he will continue to spearhead efforts to find the money to get Clark County Sheriff's deputies equipped with cameras. In the meantime, Camus is getting started. We want to uh, be transparent. We know that uh, agencies all across the country are using body-worn cameras, and it protects everybody involved. Um, and so... We're sure that we're probably going to get there. We're not quite there yet. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Moving across the Columbia to the Dalles, city councilors there voted to approve a $28.5 million deal with Google. Now, this deal will provide more water to cool the tech company's new data centers in the Dalles. As part of the deal, Google will develop two additional data centers, donate 35 acres of land to Wasco County, and transfer some water rights to the Dalles, among other things. But according to the Oregonian, so far neither city councilors nor Google have said how much water these new centers will actually need to operate. 
Some people who live in the Dalles want to know exactly how much because they're already concerned about decreasing water supplies due to climate change. Last month, the Dalles sued the Oregonian to keep the paper from releasing that information. The new deal now requires the city to keep Google's water use, that is, confidential. All right, for anyone who owns a car in Oregon, here's a reminder that a 3% increase on vehicle tag fees will kick in starting January 1st. It's all part of the state's transportation investment package, which passed back in 2017. The DMV has started mailing registration renewal reminders already with the updated fee for tags that expire after January 1st. Now, it's not a huge increase. We're talking $3 more for most title fees and $4 more for two-year registration fees. But even if you renew before January gets here, you will still have to pay those few extra bucks. The money is earmarked to fund things like improving streets, upgrading sidewalks, and reinforcing bridges to withstand earthquakes. Washington Governor Jay Inslee just issued a new executive order. The order calls for all state vehicle fleets to become 100% electric by the year 2040. Governor Inslee issued the order during his visit to Scotland for the UN Climate Summit. This is a kind of real nuts and bolts thing that is really going to get us to meet our climate uh, emission targets globally by taking local action. And I'm excited about it because I think it's the new sort of secret weapon we've brung to, to the fore of not just depending on the nation states. Inslee is attending the UN Climate Summit in Scotland as part of the Pacific Coast Collaborative. Oregon Governor Kate Brown is also there. All right, how about this? If you want to save some money on your home heating bills, a new study shows that adding skylights to your house could actually help with that. University of Oregon researcher Alan Rempel and his wife Alexandra studied how much passive solar heating systems like skylights and sunrooms can cut down on electricity use. They found the average household could save about a third on their bill. And in places that don't really get that cold in the winter, skylights alone could provide all the heat you need. That in a city like San Francisco, the, the amount that you, of energy that you could capture um, is about equal to, to what you would need um, to heat over the course of a year, just through skylights. During the pandemic, the Rempels installed a set of skylights in their own home, and they expect that that will cut their heating bill in half. They say in half Rod Hill. We bring Rod Hill in from the Weather Center. What are you looking at? Uh, what's that? Do those people live in San Francisco, though? I'm confused. Because you know what's cold in December in Oregon and Washington? A room with a bunch of skylights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need those uh, triple-paned windows, Rod. <laughs> yes, I guess so. All right, here we go. We have still some breezy uh, winds out there. Southwest 23, Hillsboro, West 24 in Aurora. Not really expecting these winds to be any stronger during the day, just to let you know. They're kind of bouncing between 5 and 25. We still have noticeable gusts east of the Cascades. There's bend west of 35 and the Dallas west of 38. But again, all advisories and warnings for winds have been allowed to expire and nothing you see on the map is expected to get any worse during the day. So that's good news. Now we're still dealing with rain. Rain showers moving through Pendleton right now. Mix of cloudiness across the entire state and a pretty hefty round of rain has just cleared downtown Portland. So this is getting ready to line up along 205 as it pushes out to the east and you see scattered showers offshore. So we'll keep this sun breaks and scattered showers going this afternoon. Stoller Family Vineyards Estate out in Dayton. So that's just beautifully sunny, right? 45 degrees there. Some darker clouds currently uh, up here in the Portland area and this is Pearson Airfield in Vancouver. We're sitting at 53. We're going to be steady temperature wise generally around 53 throughout the afternoon. Okay, coming up tomorrow night beginning Mr. Carney, what could be hours and hours of steady rain that could lead to some flooding problems by the weekend. I'll have that coming up.